What's up everybody? Main Fly Guys with another tutorial today. Today we're going to be working on a pike fly and there's a lot of bells and whistles in this one so stick with me. First off, this is a 5 odd B10S Gamakatsu hook. Um, I'm going to put on a rattle in the back. They come, I mean you can get them on Amazon, they come in these big packs. Some are better than others, these seem to be pretty good for me. But they have this little notch here that you can tie in. Moved a little closer for you. So once you get it tied in and you feel pretty confident, I like to go ahead and lay a liberal amount of super glue just to make sure that it's not going anywhere. Some people use a heat wrap, a little plastic heat wrap, where you know you, you slip the plastic tube over and you uh, heat it up. So I'm just gonna give a couple more securing wraps. All right, so this is good and dried. This is gonna be a flash tail of something. This is Crelax flash. And it is, <laughs> their slogan is, it's guaranteed to swim, <laughs> which is pretty good. Or I think it's pretty good. So what I do is I lay it right over. That way we're gonna try to create sort of a, a main to sort of cover this. So I'm laying it right over. I'm going to take the rest and I usually like to have them just a bit shorter. It just adds kind of a taper to it. And I want it to sort of cover the whole thing. So you see I'm sort of veiling it over. And then I'm going to go back and catch it right where I tied in that, um, where I tied in that rattle. So it gets this nice taper. If you have any, like this one's super long. And it just kind of makes a messy flash tail, but it's a, um, it's definitely, because this is a pike fly, I like to use more flash than, uh, say, my musky flies. So from here, I have some grizzly hackle, and I'm going to put two in on each side. For the grizzly hackle, I like to keep a little bit of the fluff in the bottom. That way, it's just another thing to kind of help hide that rattle. All right, so here's our tail section. See, now that rattle is nice and hid. It's, it's hidden very well. And uh, that's kind of how I like it. So. so, I have some white bucktail here. And what I'm going to do is pull out all the short fibers. I want this bucktail to be about half the length of my tail. So I just measure it out and give a little space, measure it out, that's about half. And then I'm gonna try and have it go 360 degrees around. So I pinch on the top, pinch on the bottom, pinch on the sides and let it spin a little. I will then trim the tips. And check it out. This is not super important. It's really, again, just sort of a veil. And like mine is uh, a little on the fluffy side. Here, I'll drop this down so you can see it. A little bit on the fluffy side, so I'll go back and just give some wraps, gentle wraps to sort of tame it down. I don't want it to fluff up too much since this is just my sort of first wrap. I kind of want to keep it nice and sleek still. So. And then once you're happy with that, you can just cover the tips up. If you are worried about your flies coming apart because of pike, um, then I would suggest super gluing these uh, connection sections. All right, so now I'm gonna come in again with another piece of white. I want it to be roughly about the same length, but this time I'm gonna tie it in uh, reverse tie Same thing, I basically just push down on top, pinch on the sides, push down on top again if I need to, and then cinch down and we're good. So you can keep these butt sections as long as you want. Sometimes I pre-cut them, sometimes I don't. Um, 
I clearly didn't today. But I just kind of go around and trim them to the length I want. The longer you keep them, the more the more water they will push. You know, you're almost creating a fake bulkhead in there, a hidden bulkhead. So I'll take my reverse tie tool, which is formerly known as a big pen, and I'm not going to do a true reverse tie, but I'm going to do sort of a bullet eye, and I'm going to cinch it down. So I have that little bullet. So I've caught the fibers a little bit. It will, basically they won't flare up as much and I don't need to spend as much time creating um, anything here. So I'm gonna, again, tame these down just a bit. Just a wee bit. Like so. And again, if you're worried about pike uh, destroying your flies, this would be another good time to put some super glue right there. So I have this magic head, which is basically a little plastic cone. And before you put it on, you're going to have to tie off real quick. Usually when I tie off, I always like to put a little drop So, the magic head, I slip it on, and I'm gonna use it to shape my fibers a little bit. So here it has a little tie down point, it's just a nice little cone. You can sort of adjust it. So do I want it not touching it at all? Do I want it shaping it a little bit? I'm gonna choose to shape it just a little bit, not a lot, and then I'm gonna tie it in. It's important that when you tie it in, you're making sure that the cone is not leaning one way or the other. Because if it is, then your fly will tend to go one way or the other, and I don't really want that. So I just make sure that it's tied in nice and straight. Take your time. Make sure it's tied in nice and tight. Okay, so from here, I'm going to go back and grab some more Crelax, another good little chunk. This stuff is very flashy, so it's very, very flashy, and it is guaranteed to swim. <laughs> and so again, what I'm gonna try to do is, I'm gonna do sort of a, I want the top flash to go about to the end of the white deer tail there. And what I'm gonna do is spread it out with my thumb so that it kind of covers the top half of this cone. Again, part of our situation now is going to be covering this cone. So I'm gonna flip it over. This skirt now is a little bit shorter than the top half. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna to try to veil it to cover that cone. So now we kind of have a 360 degree covering of this cone with the flash. Tied in nice and tight. So it's sort of hard for you to see there, but I have a really nice 360 degree covering. The, clone, the, the cone is clear, it really blends in, so you don't really need to hide it all that much, but What's great is, so now I'm gonna come in with my second color change, and it's red. So I can do a whole bunch of things now. I can tie it in regularly, and it's gonna use that cone to pitch up this deer hair. So if I wanna tie it in just a regular tie-in, I can, which sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And I usually like it. What I'll do is I'll make sure that my fibers are really, uh, really the same length. Try to make sure the same length. And I'll make this shorter, about halfway down the fly. So if that's my tail back there, about halfway down the fly um, is what I'll try to do. So here, I'll show you, I'll just tie this one in regularly. I might need more deer hair though. Maybe not though. Come on. Yeah, it'll be fine. You can always do it do another little one. 
So if I tie it in regularly, you'll see that it's nice, it's using that cone to perch it up, right? I, I, this is a very, very small clump. We're gonna do this a few times. Um, it's okay to go with a really small clump. You see how it's kind of sparse all the way around. It's really not the best wrap of all time. But if you use really sparse, that means that you can do another one very soon. So you could do another wrap right close. You don't really need to. I'm not going to, but I'd like to do two more reds in this small section up here. And the first one is gonna be a little bit, or the second one, I mean, excuse me, is gonna be a little bit thicker. because so I have a little more deer hair. You see that's a much fuller, much nicer red head that we have going on there. So again, take your time, trim. Then we can go ahead and lock this into place. And I'll repeat again, if you want, if you're worried about these flies and how much damage pike will do to them, then you can certainly, um, certainly, certainly add super glue every time point, right? So now you have an option here. You can add another grizzly hackle in that goes down the side. It kind of blends in nice with the grizzly hackle out back. I typically don't. Um, what I would rather do is put more red in um, I just, I don't know. I, I don't think it really matters. And so if it doesn't matter, then I try not to do it. But, uh, I think the red is more important. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a reverse tie, another bullet tie right at the head. So I have my fibers. And again, because our second clump was so dense, this one doesn't really need to be super, super dense, but, um, Push down, work those fibers around the eye. Might have a little bit of trouble around the eye. Don't worry, it's not a huge deal. That looks pretty good. So again, I'm gonna come back and trim. Come on, there we go. Trim these excess tips and you can keep, this is essentially another little cone head. Every time you have this bunch of, uh, you know, these little bunches of, of fibers, it acts like a barrier to water. And so it forces water to move around it and not through it. And as a predator, as pike, they are feeling that. They have their lateral line and they're trying to feel it. So here we go, I got my, even it out a little bit, no trap fibers, push it back. All right, there will be a few small tiny hairs that you won't get, but don't worry. Not a big deal. Oops. Okay, you don't want to cooperate, that's fine. There we go. So there's my final bullet tie. And these little tiny fibers that don't get trapped, you can either pull them right back, which is kind of a pain. Oftentimes what I'll do is just take a lighter to them, zap them right out. So, here's what we got. We have this nice, bulky, pushing water. We're gonna give it a little bath to make sure that everything's all right. If these, like these down here, are a little too long for me, then I will just come in, give them a little trip, give them a little trim. This will give more of a belly appearance, you know? This will give more of a belly, deep belly here. Um, so anyway, so I'll give this a few wraps. You can wrap out front a few times. Great, fantastic, we're looking great. Let me lower this down just a smidge so you can kind of see the whole. Great, looks fantastic. I'm pretty thrilled um, with this so far. So the final touch is to add a topper. And I have been using SF Blend on top. It adds some nice, the classic would be to grab some Peacock Curl 
and lay the peacock curls on top. That's classic. This SF blend is really interesting to me and it basically adds some nice counter shading that, I don't know, it's, it's just different. I think it's different and uh, I've been having a lot of success with it. So I basically tie it in right where my bullet point is and these are both about, that looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks great. So I'll just tie it in, use my finger to kind of spread it out a little bit. Great. And it just gives, ooh, a little shaky on the camera there. All it gives is some counter shading on top. So you see, I just, I mean, this is kind of, I need to comb it out a little bit. But it just gives that counter shading and uh, just makes it look a little bit better in the water. I think it does. Does it actually matter? I don't really know. But I get bored of using the same old peacock. So I add this and kind of try to blend it in a little bit. And it just gives this ever so subtle counter shading on top. It kind of goes the length of the fish. And I don't know. I really like it. I do. I really do. So that's pretty much it for that. We'll do a little whip finish on top. Great. Cheer. Now it's time to build our head. And, you know, there's so many different eye colors that you can use. There's so many different sizes that you can use. It doesn't really matter. I'm thinking about green. How do we feel about green? All right, so I picked out my color. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop a little bit of super glue right here, or zap a gap or whatever. And I'm gonna lay this eye down where I want it for about 10 seconds, decent. Great. And this will not be enough to hold it forever. I realize this. Um, but it just holds it long enough for me to be able to make a, uh, a head, which is what I'm trying to do. Two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four. Look at that long red fiber. Yeah, we'll keep it in there. All right, so it's important that the eyes, you see how they're nice there. Uh, they're the same height. If you have one that's higher than the other, that's no good. Um, so we don't want that. So the other thing is you'll see they're kind of crooked. See how that one is crooked? So when I go to make the head, I will adjust it with my fingers. So I'm going to come in. This is um, some UV gel. I've put too much. This is actually a flexible one or a more flexible one, I should say than some of the other ones. I've put too much, so I'm gonna take some off. Push it back into the head a little bit. So, as I look down, I'm pretty happy with how it's at right now. Before I zap it, I'm going to sort of just adjust the eyes and then zap it. So now you'll see they're much more parallel to one another, right? So I'll do the same thing on the bottom because it's still not a very solid head. Do the same thing on the bottom. Shake it for good luck. Shake the whole camera, shake the experience up. Great, and then boom, blind you guys. I don't know if this hurts your eyes. But for those of you who use UV gel a lot, do not look into the UV light. In fact, you should think about getting glasses or, oh no, or uh, just don't look into it because it's really bad for your eyes. My light is dead. I need to charge my batteries. But luckily we are all set and we are all done. So here's our fly. I'm gonna give it a little bath, and so you can kind of see what its wet profile looks like, and uh, yeah, and then I'll, I'll come back and show you. 
All right, so here's kind of the profile you get. It's been drying for a little bit, and uh, it's actually really dry. And uh, here's the profile you get. Little shake, magic head in there to push extra water, ton of bulk. This fly really gets the job done and does a really, really good job for me with pike here in Maine. One of my go-tos for sure. Um, if I'm having a slow day, this is definitely one that I will grab to change my day. See that? See how bulky that is? So that's uh, the main pike fly. Uh, if you have any questions about it, please feel free to ask. Uh, I'd be more than happy to answer. And uh, we have a couple new episodes of our podcast out. Please go check that out. It's called In the Film. Um, search anywhere podcasts are found. And uh, please subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. You know, you know, you know what to do. Help us out. If you help us out, we'll keep pumping out videos like this. So appreciate your time. We hope to see you next time. Take care.